most impressive ongoing projects in Botswana. Hello Displorers, welcome to another informative video presented to you by Displow and thanks for watching. In this video we shall have an architectural drive through Botswana to examine the top ongoing projects in the country. Botswana has seen an increase in the development of commercial properties, power plants, infrastructure and the mining industry. This growth and increase in demand are due to the nation's attractive and open regulatory environment to international investors. Botswana's economy is one of the strongest in Africa and the country has one of the world's highest growth rates, largely attributed to abundant diamond resources coupled with sound macroeconomic policies. Botswana is the world's largest producer of germ diamonds in value term. Thanks to the country's regulatory open system, a lot of investments have seen the emergence of massive projects in Botswana. Hence, here are the top ongoing projects in Botswana. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of our subsequent videos. Number 7. 950 kW power photovoltaic power plant in Gaborone. Construction of a 950 kW power photovoltaic power plant at Diamond Trading Company Botswana DTCB's offices in Gaboron, Botswana has begun. The company is hoping the solar power project will enable it to attain energy self-sufficiency. Diamond Trading Company Botswana, a 50-50 joint venture between the state of Botswana and the International Diamond Mining and Trading Company De Beers, is developing the solar project in two phases. The first phase will provide 350 kW power to power its premises in Gaborone during the day. The 600 kW power second phase will be built later and will play the same role, facilitating DTCB Botswana's role in facilitating, stimulating and supporting the creation of a vibrant, sustainable and profitable diamond industry in the southern African country through superior sorting and valuation practices. Number 6. Construction of $14.8 million abattoir in Tabong, Botswana Construction of the $14.8 million multi-species abattoir in Tabong, Botswana has begun. This is after President Dr. Mogwiti Masisi performed the ground-breaking ceremony of the project which is expected to play a great role in marketing Botswana's beef, mouton, lamb, chevron and game meat. According to the President, the state-of-the-art abattoir would facilitate production and marketing of livestock and game products and increase the country's export value. Noting that the Glagladi district experiences multiple challenges including poor climatic conditions and lack of development, Dr. Masisi said that the area was renowned for cattle, small stock and game farming, so it was out of utmost importance that it is adequately supported to overcome its myriad of challenges. Furthermore, construction of the facility is a significant milestone towards fulfilling the government's promise to support small farms' viability and unlock Botswana's potential as a hub of producing high-quality food for local consumption and for export. The small stock population of about 1.5 million, comprising 1.2 million goats and 264,000 sheep, shows that the sector has the potential to contribute towards economic diversification, poverty eradication and employment creation efforts as well as food security and nutrition. The Tabong Abattoir is expected to slaughter 50 to 60 cattle or a minimum of 300 small stock per day. The project will also facilitate the growth of the livestock sector, skill transfer and dissemination because it is one of the critical links to the implementation of the beef and small stock cluster strategies, which are key to commercialization and to improving competitiveness of the country's livestock subsector. Number 5. Construction of Fields Mall in Botswana Construction of Fields Mall in Botswana, a 26,000 meter square retail center, is expected to cost $26.1 million. Funds, which were raised by Smart Partnership Enterprises (SPE) shareholders, expected to be complete by April 2022, with the opening date set for April 28 same year. According to Mr. Sam Mpunchane, Smart Partnership Enterprises chairperson, the mall would consist of 70 shops, with a number of reputable retailers and anchor tenants being Spa, Peak and Pay, Woolworths, the main retail outlets, as well as other new restaurants from South Africa. According to Mr. Mpuchane, SPE is a wholly citizen-owned company registered in 1998 with a specific purpose to ensure that the major retail development in the CBD are owned and developed by Botswana. The company comprises of over 100 Botswana citizens from all walks of life, with some being business people, retirees and professionals from various fields. Mr. Puchani said that the mall would occupy part of the 9-hectare mixed-use plot in the CBD. The name The Fields Mall was inspired by the name The Cotton Fields by which the area was commonly known as before. He added, and phase two was commonly known as before. Sam Puchani, the chairman of the Smart Partnership Enterprises, says that the mall will help raise the profile of the company. The investors are committed to ensuring that the field's mall becomes a reality, said Mr. Puchani. The contractor, Kyle Lake Botswana, is engaged with the field work. However, tendering for the actual construction of the complex will be advertised by the company as building begins. Number four, construct multi purpose stadium in Palapier. 
Palapier Moroplay Coal Mine MCM through the organization's legacy project will construct multi-purpose stadium in Palapier. The community liaison manager, Mr. Letibogo Duapi, told the Palapier Sub-District Development Committee that the mine's board of directors had approved the budget for phase one of the project. He said MCN had been working hand in hand with the council's physical planning division and that the stadium would be situated at the Palapier area zoned for development along the road to Seroe. He explained that phase one of the stadium project included a football field with artificial turf, netball pitch, steel structure, grandstands to accommodate 500 spectators, parking facility for 200 cars, wall and fencing as well as access roads. He explained that the project entailed electrical reticulation and mini subtraction and portable water reticulation. The project also includes sewage reticulation, sewage tank and pump sump, absolution facilities and a petition walkway. He said the facility would promote sports in Palapie and would also benefit the community, mine workers and local terms such as Morupole Wonders. Mr. Ndwapi also indicated that phase 2 of the project would include a brick clubhouse, change house facilities, steel structure grandstands to accommodate 2,000 people, access control, additional 500 car park facility, LED floor lights, outdoor and public address speakers. Number 3. Lesotho Botswana Water Transfer Scheme the Lesotho Botswana Water Transfer LBWT scheme will supply water to Botswana Lesotho in South Africa from the Makaleng Dam, part of the Lesotho Lowlands Water Supply Scheme, through a water conveyance pipeline of approximately 700 kilometers in length from Lesotho through South Africa to Botswana. Investment request for the project is about $2.8 million, grant funding for outstanding feasibility studies related to the dam and conveyance pipeline. Funding received to date includes $2 million, grants from the World Bank in 2015 for a desktop study on the LBWT scheme. The African Water Facility and the NEPAD Infrastructure Project Preparation Facility Special Fund provided a $2.5 million grant for studies to establish the technical feasibility of the entire system and the feasibility of the dam in Lesotho. The Stockholm International Water Institute and Creative are supporting pre-feasibility institutional and financial studies as well. Global Water Partnership Southern Africa will support the project's capacity building requirement with $200,000 cash and in kind. The Orange Senko River Commission, ORESCOM, will provide $200,000 cash and in kind, while the government of Botswana, Lesotho, and South Africa will initially provide $75,000 cash and in kind. The main sponsor of the project is the ORESCOM, on behalf of the government of Botswana, Lesotho, Namibia, and South Africa. Number 2 Mambambula Power Plant. Mamambola is a planned coal mine and coal fired power station to the east of the main road and rail corridor in Botswana between Gaborone and Francis Town and south of the Seororome River. The power station would be near to the village of Mafasalala and it's about 130 kilometers north of the capital of Gaborone. The Mamambola coal field is considered to be a western extension of the Waterbury coal field in the Elisras Basin in South Africa to the east, which contains about 40% of South Africa's coal resources. CIC Energy of Canada owned two prospecting licenses in the coal field and conducted extensive exploratory drilling between 2005 and 2012. The portions of the coal field for which CIC Energy held licenses are estimated 12 2.4 billion tons of thermal coal of a quality is suitable for export, for local power generation and for coal gasification. Deposits were roughly 360 million tons in the central bank, 643 million tons in the western block and 1,392 million tons in the eastern block. The south block, which lies on both sides of the road and rail corridor, is estimated to hold another 311 million tons of coal. Number 1. Francistown Food Bridge on Carts Acting Francistown Clerk Mr. Lawrence Mazignani says funds permitting a 200-meter footbridge will be constructed between Somerset Extension and Block 2 locations in the city. The bridge would be convenient for the residents of the two wards who periodically crossed Tati River to the other side to access services. Mr. Lawrence also said that the city council had engaged a company to do environmental impact survey. The acting town clerk stated, however, that COVID-19 had delayed preliminary design of the bridge. Minister Fielda Kering said that the overall budget of the bridge would be arrived at once the survey, the design report and the scope of work were done. He said that the bridge would be constructed such that it would be beautiful and useful and robust even in the next 30 years. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Environment, Natural Resource Conservation, and tourism. Dr. Oduete Koboto said that the role of the ministry was to identify how far the plots were from the proposed site and devise modalities of compensation to people who would be affected by the development. There you have it, Disperers. Those were the top 10 ongoing projects in Botswana. Thanks for watching this video, and if you did enjoy the video, do well to give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends.